Hello friends, Tanya here with another video featuring Spellbinders Kit of the Months. This one is the APG die of the month. It's called Lattice Petal Foldover. It has many beautiful intricate pieces and of course because it is a Becca Fecan design, it is extremely, <clears throat> extremely versatile. It's got all of these beautiful pieces. These little pieces act as a closure for a foldover envelope. We've got many different pieces that lay inside of this petal card die. I don't know if you have been stamping for a long time, but I have, and both these rolled flowers and petal cards have been around and been used in a variety of projects for a long time. This is one of my favorite ways to use the petal card to make a box for any number of things. I happen to love loose leaf tea and I buy enough that I like to share it with other people. This is a one ounce sample bag of loose leaf tea and it fits in there perfectly. This is about a three inch square in the center of the petal guard. It does cut out beautifully from a six inch piece of cardstock, six inch square. And I took some mirror cardstock here and I used all of the petal card pieces and die cut that. It does cut the center from the card if you use the square that accompanies it. And to add these to a solid white piece of cardstock to decorate it, I am trimming these off just using my scissor. You could use a trimmer, whatever you would like to do. I was feeling brave. I thought I could trim those off without problem with my long bladed scissors. And then we're going to take and the center. So we're going to use those four half circles plus the center square and two petal card dies or die cuts. We're going to trim off one of the flaps and on the one we've trimmed off we're going to add the decorative pieces on the two parallel half circles that are left, the two parallel flaps. Just going to use the Barely Arts Precision Glue to add some dots to the center and a solid line around the outer pieces. And we're gonna do the same with the square. And because I used the die, it has some creases or some uh, embossed detail on the die cut that show where the square fits perfectly. Now with these half circles, that bottom bar with the little slants lines up exactly perfectly. It makes applying these to the die cut pieces a snap. I'm telling you, it is so convenient. Since you don't have to worry about an even border around all of the edges, it just snugs up right to the outer edges. It's super easy and I love this scrolled filigree type um, detail. Just beautiful. So now that we have applied all of these decorative elements, we're going to crease all of the flaps on the three-sided piece. And because I use some pretty heavy weight, I believe it's like 120 pound cardstock, I did fold backwards and then forwards on the pieces. And on the back piece, we are going to leave the decorated flap unfolded and uncreased. Now to assemble this box, we're going to take the three-sided one and that's going to have a flap overlapping on the bottom. And I do use my grid lines to line all of those up. I take the curve and line that up with the crease on the other piece and the same thing for each of the sides. You're just going to apply some glue, fold that up, line the curve with the, line up the curve of one flap with the crease at the bottom of the other flap and adhere those quickly. And the Barely Arts Precision Glue is fantastic for that. I did take the Glimmer of the Month for August and um, glimmered and die cut this sentiment that says, have a great day. And I die cut that with the coordinating hexagon die. And then I took the little rolled flower die that comes in the APG of the month. And I added a little 
inking with whatever pink was on my blender brush. I did that on both sides because this is a 3D element. You're going to see both sides of the paper. I'm using my reverse tweezers to grip the edge and I'm just rolling it around itself, adding a dab of Barely Art Precision Glue to the end and just pressing that to the bottom of the rolled rose or rolled flower. I am roughing up the edge. There is a very slight crease line along it, so you can kind of roll that flower edge down and make it a little fuller. And you can let that loosen and get as full as you would like. I was amazed at how well the Barely Arts Precision Glue adhered that bud together. There are these amazingly detailed uh, little leaves. They have the veining already in them and I'm using this kit for the Susan's Garden flower forming kit and I just wanted the stylus and it does come with a reverse tweezer and I'm adding some dimension to these die cut and embossed leaves. I'm just going to use the tweezer to create a crease in the center from the bottom to the tip and then I'm going to leave it attached, get a good grip, flip it over and use the stylus to add a little curve back. So the tip of the leaf has some dimension and curves add some fullness. We're gonna add some of these little buds to the front of the box. I used a little coaster blank to add some dimension. You can use whatever you like to use to add dimension. And I'm adhering it to the center of the square. I could have used the additional little die to cut out the center, but I was covering it anyway, so I didn't need to add that detail. I'm taking these preformed little buds and I am adhering them to the front of the box. I'm going to take three leaves here, and I did struggle a little bit. It is foil uh, mirror card that I did use for the filigree, so it takes a little longer for the glue to stick. You just have to be patient <laughs> and not knock it off all the time, which I kept doing, but it was easy to assemble this and the Barely Arts Precision Glue dries clear so you don't get any funny glue look if you smear it around and don't have something covering it. <laughs> I'm using the regular tweezer, which has a nice fine point, interchangeably with my reverse tweezer. Those are both wonderful tools. I'm going to add a third leaf here for some lovely balance, just tucking it underneath that hexagon. It might have been easier to do this before it was assembled, but I don't know. Probably not because it would have been tough to assemble the box with all the bulk on the front. I do decide to add a pretty little flower right at the top of the box also. Adding my flowers first, or excuse me, adding my leaves first and adhering those. It's nice that you can lay the box on its back to add these fun details. Now you wouldn't necessarily see that rose. Oh, they are so cute. I didn't think I would love those little flowers so much, but they are adorable and super easy. So there's two ways you can die cut these out. You can cut them out all together. You do have to do a few passes to get all of the elements or all of the little fine details to be well die cut or you can take it and add the pieces to the die cut main body and then add the detail pieces later. Now currently this particular project I'm working on we are going to make a little envelope for a three by three card. I think this turned out so pretty. I love it. <laughs> if you've ever made a petal card envelope before this won't be a new concept to you. It does um, take a little time to get rid of all of those little chads out of the um, design, but it's much faster when you have a die release brush like that. So I again used a very heavy cardstock, so I'm being very careful. It's a little eater easier with a lighter weight cardstock, but I wanted the stability of the heavyweight cardstock for all of that filigree especially since we're going to be sticking a little card with some dimension inside of this envelope. This little piece has these tabs that will hook on the 
top curve of each of those flaps and hold your card envelope closed. It is such a clever closure. I adore it. And I thought I was going to have a little bit of a struggle bus issue with this, but it turned out to work better if you used a lighter weight cardstock. So I didn't use it with the same weight of cardstock. I used a probably a 100 pound or an 80 pound cardstock to make that little closure device. Next we're going to take a 3x3 three three inch card base and we're going to add this square to the card base. I love that filigree design and I'm just adding dots of glue in the interior and a line of glue on the outer part and on the solid center. This is going to be more glue than you actually need. Loving again the Barely Art Precision Glue. We are also, I contemplated using the clear stamp of the month. I don't know if you've noticed, but Spellbinders has making everything pretty coordinated these days. Um, instead, I decided to use a circle element from the July large die of the month. Um, it's a color blocking die set and it is super, super useful. It had an outline sentiment and a circle that work together to create this element for the front of the card. And I've used a hexagon on the center of this square and now a circle. It's pretty versatile. All, that design works beautifully with whatever shape you want to use with it. I added a little rosebud or flower bud with a couple of leaves and that completes that card. I didn't do anything on the inside since I wasn't using stamps for this one. Now I'm going to add that closure and there it is. I love that it holds it just perfectly and that it's clear that you just squeeze those little tabs to open it. Then that fits inside of the box also. So you could give that box with a little note card in the inside. And look at that. I added a rose and some leaves just to the center. You put a little bit of dot, of, you put a dot of glue in the center of the X inside on that tab and then put your rosebud on it. I did have this uh, card in the little envelope facing down first and then I flipped it over and closed it over the decorated part of the card and it actually fits better this way um, and you can peek at the card through it. Here are the three projects that I completed. I'm going to in in call the envelope a uh, individual project because it's so pretty. It's so pretty. You could put all kinds of things in that little envelope. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I've tempted you to get this APG of the month. It is available through, I believe, the 24th of August that you can order it as a part of the club. And after that, I would return to the Spellbinders site um, maybe on September 10th to see if they had any extras that will be available at an individual price. However, they are at a higher price point if you don't buy them as part of the club. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please take a moment to do that now. And if you like this video, please give it a like. If you're interested in any of the product I used in this uh, video, check the description box below and I will have that linked for you. Until next time, bye-bye.